Today we're visiting the Boy Cavern. Parque de las Cavernas del Rio Muy. Here's the entrada. Vamos, Beto. Hey, we're going to go pick up our tickets. But before that, <laughs> we have one very important thing we have to do. We do. Normally I'd sit on this, but uh, it's too darn hot. It would burn me. It would burn my butt, actually. <laughs> Pick up our headsets. Okay, hi. 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 Before we start, it's very wet and slippery inside the caverns, so I need you guys to be very careful walking in. Uh, we're 200, 280 feet uh, below from the lobby all the way up here, and we're gonna go at least 150 feet more. So it's gonna be interesting. <laughs> One of the 16 entrances to the system, and this is just 0.1% of the whole system we're gonna be able to see. The other, the other parts of the system, it's very hard. Only explorers and cavers are able to go in. This was discovered in 1968 by a soldier. He was flying by with a, in his helicopter. He saw that there was a big hole, the sinkhole, that we were all coming down in. Came down close enough to see that there was something down here. He got curious and that's when they called in uh, the couple, Russell Gurney and Jean Gurney. They came in in 1970, explored the whole system for 10 years. 1986, this park was open to the public. The formations that we see hanging from the ceiling are stalactites, and as we walk further inside, I'll give you more information how they grow and other names they form. I'm a type of tour guide. I use my imagination. Every formation, I give a name to it. <laughs> if you take a look on the right, on the left, on the wall ceiling, there's a rock sticking out. As you're walking down, it might look like a skull to some of us. Explorador o un cuevero. Pero en esta parte aquí. Un profesional. Sí. En esta parte aquí van a ver las formaciones que cuelgan del techo. Son las estalactitas. Son las For a stalactite to grow, it takes 200 to 1,000 years to grow one cubic inch, which is almost the length of our fingernail, okay? So please do not touch. Everyone knows stalactites grow by water filtering. Water has calcite, carbon, and acids. That's what's making the stalactites grow. Okay, as we walk down, you can actually see on the ceiling the water filtering which actually glows, it looks like gold. This is because of the moss on the walls or on the limestone. We call this the fool's gold. <laughs> <laughs> and here is where I demonstrate the difference between stalactite, stalagmite. Easiest way to remember, stalactite, you hold on tight. Stalagmite might reach the top. This is how you can see how the limestone calcifies with water. Turns into quartz. Okay, everyone, we are now at the South Gallery. Right in the back of us, we're here at the natural opening of the caves. This entrance is 75 feet wide, 25 feet high. We can see vegetation because of the sunlight, the humidity, and guano, which is bat poop. 
The bat poop is a very good fertilizer. That's why we have more green vegetation here. The humidity down here is 100% humidity, which means, ladies, blow dried hair, strain down here. I don't think it's, you're gonna come out the same. You're gonna come out either frizzy or poofy. <laughs> On the walls, we have these lines. These are called scallops. That's the evidence of the river when it used to flow through here millions and millions of years ago. We're standing 200 feet above the river Kamui right now. Temperature here, it's always from 60 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit, but we won't feel it because of the humidity and our body temperature. So we're gonna come out sweating. <laughs> now this rock, I was explaining to him, this never was here before. This came in with Hurricane Maria. When the system flooded almost 300 feet of water. Wow. Wow. Yeah, it was a lot. That's why we have no electricity. Uh, on the walls, you actually see the markings of the dirt. It's right here in this area only. This is how high the river rolls here for Maria. Wow. As we walk further inside, it gets worse. Wow. It gets worse. So it was a lot for us. Mm -hmm. so on the ceiling, we no longer see stalactites. What we're able to see now are craters, which are these holes here. And, oh, this is no for this. These craters are is created because the limestone absorbs. When it rains, it's like a sponge, filters in the limestone, water has acids, and acids is what's making the stalactites grow. Eventually, within the years, I won't be here. I won't, I won't be existing, but water will flow through here like a waterfall. Hmm. Uh, the bats. Okay. I like to talk about the bats. Sometimes they're in these craters. Sometimes, not all the time. Uh, before Maria, we used to have thousands and thousands of bats. After Maria, we lost most of the population. We lost 90% of the population due to the fact that it flooded up to here in this area. This is the dirt marks here. Um, the second reason, when a bat gets scared, it, gets, it starts to run away and it gets lost. They're somewhere in Puerto Rico, but they're just lost. It takes five to 10 years for a bat to come back to its original habitat. The biggest stalagmite in Puerto Rico. This stalagmite is 33 in diameter, 17 feet high. We all know it grows by water from the stalactites on the ceiling. Stalactites are shallow, they have a straw, water filters down, drops on the ground, eventually within the years, the stalagmite will grow. When a stalactite comes down, stalagmite grows up, they form solid columns of concrete. In order for this to grow, it takes many, many, many years. Also, on the top here, we have what we call flowstones. If you see, they're a lot flatter, and they have waves, they have different details. We also call these draperies or curtains, and I will show you why in a few seconds. The wall to your right. Now we see the flow stones with a little more color, right? This is what I call broccoli, cave broccoli. <laughs> now along this wall, you're gonna see the drapery or the curtains. Look at all the details it has. This is all made by water. It's amazing. This is what I call the cave bacon. <laughs> broccoli and bacon. It's 210 feet inside. Mm -hmm. Now the difference between caves and caverns, caves don't have exits. Uh -huh. Caverns always have multiple openings, passages, salons, and galleries. So the sinkhole over here is uh, 419 feet deep. And it was filled with uh, 300 feet of water after uh, Maria. 419 feet deep. La lluvia, últimamente, porque usualmente no se puede ver el río. Mm. Ahí abajo entra este baño 
The tour used to go a little further on here into the cave, but uh, Maria has destroyed that. You see, he destroyed the, the fence, and I guess it's uh, pretty unsafe in there now. So the bats have brought these almonds up. Okay. The pause I'm here at the exit of the cage. Fossil of a manatee. Wow. Get in here. Come. At the bridge is where the river flows. You can hear it. This area, the bats live in the cave to the right. Do not touch the handrails. Everything has guano bat poop. Guano has a lot of bacteria and a lot of fungus. The fungus you're going to be able to see around is a white fuzzball. Do not touch. I suggest to keep your masks on because there's a lot of fungus from here all the way to the south gallery. Do not touch the handrail. This wall here is a quartz. You can tell, you can see the quartz here. A lot of spiritual people say this has a lot of um, positive energy. Well, that was cool, huh? It was. I mean, it was. Uh, it was very much. It was much different than, uh, you know, the uh, the Cueva del Viento, and uh, I mean. Uh, well, we learned the difference between a cueva and a caverna. A, a cave goes in, and there's no only exit. one exit. There's one entrance and exit. Whereas a caverna, a cavern has a whole bunch of different exits and entrances. Yeah, so, so, really so cool. it was interesting. I mean, it's super big here, um, and there was sort of learned a lot about the, what happened to it. It was closed down for two years after Maria, and uh, you know, it was, it, was, it was really interesting. Yeah, 30 million years old. Yeah, so we, you know, it cost us, um, cost us $40, 18 a, 18 a person, and uh, $4 for the car to get in here. Right. And, uh, but it was, I don't know, it was an hour, hour and a half long. Yeah. Uh, quite interesting. So. Yeah, so definitely take it. Yep. It's slippery, it's a lot of walking, so make sure you have the energy and the ability to walk. But if you do, I would suggest bringing a flashlight, which I didn't think to do, so I only had my phone flashlight. They used to have electricity here, but that got washed away by Maria, Hurricane Maria. But still, it's really interesting and you will love it. On our way to the car, uh, they came up to us and uh, asked us if we would like to get an uh, individual tour of some of the areas that have been closed since Maria. And uh, they're taking us to the, uh, the Sumidero, the big big sinkhole, and uh, some of the uh, some of the other areas here that, uh, um, that that are closed that they're trying to reopen five years five years after Maria. But it's a constant battle here with uh, getting the funds and uh, you know getting the time to uh, to be able to do that. But it's been uh, you know, it's, it was a real real bonus on the, on our trip to Kamoi here. As a sort of not to come to. Uh -huh. Este supervisor dice que dijo que no lo suban porque es muy peligroso ah, todavía. Okay. Ah, uh, que no se puede subir hasta allá arriba. Ese es el sumidero Tres Pueblos. Ese es de Lares. De Lares. Sí. Oh. Y aquí es el wow. sumidero. Wow. Looks good. That's the river right there. That wow. cave in there goes into the back cave where we went in. This this river right here, that cave inside. Oh, down there. That's the entrance oh, to go wow. into the back cave inside where we were standing at, where you can hear the river. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Now, you see that line? That's how high the river rolls here. Wow. Hablamos un poquito de esto, que está interesante este río y todo esto. Es que esta aquí es donde está esa entrada de la cueva. Ahí es donde corre el río como tal y entra en la parte de la número 8, mm. dentro de la cabeza. Pues se sepa el cable. Wow. From Lares to Camuy, and then Camuy to Atillo. I did it.
Oh. I did it seven times. Go wow. On. Will they do it again? See, sí, Atillo. See, so are they going to uh, reopen that? I don't know, because we, with Maria, he hasn't come back. It was a private home. Oh. But now he's waiting for the permits of the park oh, okay. to come uh -huh. from. Uh -huh. So maybe somebody. We hope so. We hope so. Could, could you go over like the, uh, the, the date of the information about uh, you know, how long this is? Of course. Is, this is where this is uh, the Sumidero, the three towns, Cinco. Uh -huh. This is where the three towns link together in a triangle. Right over there, it's the town of Lares. Uh -huh. We're standing in Atillo. And then the next one will be Camuy. Camuy. This is the Cinco, the three town Cinco. The Cinco is 620 diameters and 420 feet deep. Uh -oh. This is where the actual river flows. From here, you can actually see it goes underground from this area five miles into the system. That's where we were at Station uh -huh. 8 and it empties there. All this was, like I said, clogged up. If you guys can take a look on top of the cave, that luckily, that like brownish uh, line. That's how there. high it went? That's how high it went. Wow. Did you see it? Yeah. Uh -huh. was, and then since it was salt water, all this vegetation, you can oh, actually geez. see everything down there. Oh. So oh. everything, I'm, it's a miracle we, we have vegetation. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing that it can take 30 million years to build a cave and then this one event can alter it yes. so much in a day. Yes. I know it traumatized me big time. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Big yeah. time. Wow. There's another, there's another cave here that uh, I like went down I'm not about 200, 200 steps to that got wiped away in Maria. She's now taking us uh, down there. side the tourist pueblos this is the zip line one, oh. one of the stops to the zip line you see here oh yeah wow there's a zip line wow that must have exactly. been fantastic I can't even imagine. incredible this going over that here. be careful here yeah. wow Wow, look at the zip lines there. Holy heck. That would just be incredible. May your suitcase always be messy. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you'll be able to watch all of our upcoming exciting videos. Hasta luego. Going to some of the old ones. That's right. Adios.